welcome friends to this two day get together i'm very happy to be back in montreal again after some time and very happy to see all my friends old and new when i say new friends because we may not have met physically but at some level we have known each other for a long time not the physical level these are bodies we are wearing temporarily but we have other forms of life in which we have been associated and in which we have been joined together this creation in which we are now living is just a product of one consciousness that means in reality we are all part of one consciousness therefore it's appropriate for me to say that we are all friends because we come from the same origin from the same oneness that oneness is not lying anywhere else in this experience physical experience it's lying within the experience the self if we can know what is our true self we have discovered all the truth there is to be known our true self is creating all these experiences whether they are spiritual experiences or they are physical experiences or disembodied astral experiences no matter what kind of experience is created it all comes from the self so the self is the reality the experiencer is the reality not the experience experience is created but the creator of the experience is the reality when we want to find that reality we are looking for it outside somewhere is not anywhere outside it's within our own self all the mystics and saints have said the same thing all masters have said the same thing find the truth within yourself the kingdom is of god is within yourself therefore you have to go within your own self the only problem is that we do not at this time know exactly where that self is our own self since we are in a physical body we have a tendency to think that the physical body is our own self if that were so this self is born and dies in a short time then it's a very transitory thing it could not be the creative power that creates all experiences that is why the physical body cannot possibly be our true self it's just as a temporary cover upon our own self there is a way in which we all find out that the body is not our true self and that is when we die when we die the body lies here with no life in it it's gone we can't say that's our self is a dead body and what happens when we die does the whole show end there or does something remain people speculate if there is after life or not but speculation is because we like to discuss things outside we are constantly in debate outside whether there is after life or not but nobody has found a way that we can easily check out if there is after life or not and that is by pretending to be dead let us say can we truly pretend that we are dead can we do the same thing to our body while we are alive here which will happen when we die if you see people dying i have seen lot of my friends die at my age the, there's a chance that i have many of my friends have gone and i've seen some of them in terminal conditions where i could watch them die when a person dies what happens that his awareness of his body starts disappearing it starts from the extremities a person dying says where are my hands 
says, put my leg in this place. The leg is already in that place. So the awareness of the hands and feet goes away. That's the start of the death. And then the whole limbs go away. Doesn't know where the arms and legs are. Then the death starts from the bottom of the torso. And the person begins to feel he's flying because there is no sensation left in the lower part of the body. Then the death proceeds to go upwards toward the heart and the person cannot speak. And we see notice on the face of that person who is dying that he cannot speak but he wants to speak. The tongue is tied but the eyes are still moving. Then the death comes up higher. Ultimately, it comes to the head, to the brain and we say the person is dead. It's a procedure that can happen rapidly or it can happen slowly. But if you carefully see, death is a withdrawal of awareness from the extremities right up to the head. Can we copy that and find out now? If we can copy exactly this process, we should be able to find out what happens when we will die. Now many people have tried that method and successfully found out that when we die, we do not completely die. Excuse me. I should put it off earlier. Excuse me, one more. Too many in my pocket. When a person dies, he can find out that body has died, but he, has, he is not dead. When you simulate this death, which is sometimes called dying while living, you can also find out what will happen when you actually die. That's a great way to prove to yourself that there is life after death and what form you will have, you can also know that. People don't try that, they just discuss. Is there life after death? They keep on discussing. But when there is a method to find out, one can employ that method. It's very simple, really. How do we know there is a world around us? It is because we have in awareness and consciousness the power of putting attention. Whatever we put attention to becomes alive for us. Supposing we were to put attention on the little flowers here and look at them and forget everything, nothing else will be seen by us except the flowers. It's the power of attention and the power to concentrate attention. We can read a book and put attention on the book. Then we don't know what's happening around. Therefore, this power of attention that we put on the world creates the world for us. If we withdraw that attention, we don't know the world is there. This unique facility, unique gift given to a human being to use attention wherever one likes can also be used to pull your attention not on any book, not on flowers, but on your own self. When you want to put attention on your own self, you just figure out where are you operating from within the body, where are you thinking from, where do all the feelings come in you, where are you looking out from this world and putting attention. Since we are looking out from the eyes, physical eyes, if we close our eyes, we still feel we are behind the eyes. They are closed, but we can still feel that the eyes are in front of us and the world is outside. That means in wakeful state, we are constantly conscious that our point of operation in the physical body is in the head behind the eyes. That's good information because in that case, we can put our attention on ourselves behind the eyes. 
these are two eyes. We could have had one eye also. But why two eyes? Because two eyes are seeing two different things. The two eyes cannot see the same picture. They see two different pictures. Because they are located separately. And you can have easy experiment, put a finger in front of you. If you look at the finger is one, you look at the distance, they become two. Because we are concentrating two pictures and making them one, which creates the sense of distance, creates space for us. That is why we have two eyes to create space and distance. That is why the two eyes to two pictures, but we have the capacity to concentrate, put them together, and inside the head see one picture. Where do we see the picture? Not in the eyes. If we saw in the eyes, we'd see two pictures all the time. We see one picture inside our head, behind the eyes, in the center of our head. And that is sometimes called the third eye. The third eye merely means that we are now being able to see things by combining the two images of the two eyes. We are all seeing this world from third eye right now. I am making this special point because some people believe that they have to work hard to find where third eye is. We are always at third eye. In the wakeful state, we are always at third eye and we have to see things from the third eye. That is where our self is operating from in the wakeful state in physical body. You can take time and figure out where are you operating from by eyes closed where are you in the body you'll know you're not in the hands and feet you're not in the stomach not even the heart but you are right here behind the eyes in the wakeful state when you're sleeping you are somewhere else but right now when we are awake we are behind the eyes if we put our attention on our own self behind the eyes at the third eye center what will happen if you concentrate your attention, soon you will not know where your hands and feet are. Soon you will not know where your legs are. So gradually you will not know uh, where the whole body is. It's just an exercise, sometimes called meditation. So this meditational exercise can lead to our withdrawal of awareness from the extremities of the body, right from the bottom of the torso, right to the top of the head, exactly like we die in physical death. That means there is a method available right now to us to check out what death will be like. It will be withdrawal of attention from the extremities of the body, from the bottom, right to the top. When you experience that, you discover that you are not dead at all that you can still see, you can still hear, you can even touch things, you can smell. That means all the sense perceptions which we thought were only because of a physical body are still intact. Actually, we are experiencing those things even now. If we imagine something, we want to imagine some picture, some friend's face, we can see it with eyes closed, with eyes open. That by imagination we have a vision. That means the power to see is not in these eyes. The power to see is in an inner vision which can operate through imagination, can also operate through these eyes. These eyes can only see because you have the power to see inside. If these eyes were not there, you can still see. In imagination, we still see. That is why the inner eyes are not the physical eyes and they can still see. What you will discover if you withdraw your attention from the physical body to the third eye center where you are putting your attention and concentrating is, you will find you have a body exactly like this body but with no matter in it. No physical matter in it. But the power to use the five senses is completely intact. Not only intact, they are very sharp. 
Have you ever tried that if your eyesight is weak and you are trying to read a newspaper, you need glasses or something, but to read the same newspaper in imagination, your eyesight is 20-20. You will find that if you withdraw your attention and do things with the inner self, all the five senses are very sharp and intact. That means you have something inside you. But if you are able to have these experiments frequently, more often, over a period of time, you will not only have the five senses intact, you will discover that your mind that is working in this body, the thinking mind, is also thinking mind in the inner body and can remember things. In the physical body, we can't remember too much. This is too gross, too heavy a body with matter. So we can't remember everything. But with the inner body, you'll remember things that happened 30 years ago, 40 years ago, 100 years ago, 200 years ago. That is the clearest proof that the inner body was there 200 years ago. It's your own memory. You're remembering your own things. You can remember things 1000 years ago, the inner body, not with this body. But when we assume that this body is the only reality, we can't have that experience. That is why we have to start by saying, is there something else in me which can give me more information of what happens after we die? When you lay that inner self over time and spend several months practicing this, you can remember so much of your past life. You can also remember that you had other bodies similar to this one in an earlier time. There is a lot of proof then for your own self, not in any books or anywhere, with your own personal experience that you had a life prior to this body and you will have a life after this body. That the inner body has a much longer life than the physical body and we are using the inner self to occupy this body from time to time. Now, this is called true meditation on the self. When we say meditate, meditate merely means putting attention on something. You can, we all are meditators, but we meditate on external things and we don't meditate on the self. If the secret lies in the self, then we should be able to meditate on the self. And this process can be done by anybody. There is no particular school or particular group to join. There is no particular nationality that has to only get this experience. Every human being of whatever color of the skin, whatever nationality, whatever culture, whatever religion can have this experience. In fact, when I studied religions at Harvard University, I studied the top 16 religions of the world, and I found that all of them refer to the reality being within ourselves. So nobody has said that you'll find reality outside. No religion has said this. So that is why the indication given to us is, is truth has to be found inside. This is the first most important point, first most important step to discover that the physical body is not our reality. It's a temporary experience that we're having here. And there is something inside us more real than compared to this, more long-lasting. And the sense perceptions that we are having here are completely intact in that body. Not only the sense perceptions, the power to think. The mind is equally active. In fact, more active in the inner body than it's active here. The memory is much sharper inside than it is here. So these are great experiences one can have. But this can be done only if you go within yourself and not debate about these things outside. We like to discuss these things, read about them. Now when we try to practice this thing, we get disheartened because we are so much used to seeing a world outside. We close our eyes, it's dark. And we say, at least we can see something outside. And we are closing our eyes, there is nothing. So that is why we give up. But some patience is needed 
to withdraw attention to the third eye and then you can have that experience. This inner self is also a body. It consists of sense perceptions without matter. This body that we are wearing now, the physical body, is made up of, sen of sense perceptions with matter, with physical matter, with atoms and molecules. The inner body has no atoms or molecules. It has no physical matter, but sense perceptions are intact. The sense perceptions themselves are the inner body. This inner body has sometimes been called the astral self, the astral body. The word astral was used because it refers to the sky. And the sky that you will experience in the inner body is different than the sky you see with the physical body. That is why the sky is made a reference point. The inner sky does not have any darkness. The outer sky is bright with the sun, at night it becomes dark. The inner sky never becomes dark, nor does it become very bright. So therefore there is a constant light, very dim, not very heavy, but still. And that will be always there, no matter what time you go within yourself and discover it. So because of the nature of the sky, it has been called the astral level. Now the astral level gives you a sense of a body without matter, therefore without weight. Therefore it can easily fly where it likes. People talk of flying in space, in the inner self. Yes, it can be done by anybody. This is not something unique to some people. Anybody can do it. A child of five years old, old man of 100 years old, whether man, woman or neutral, can all do it. This is something available to every human being, no matter what. There is no restriction at all. All you have to do is to practice putting your attention within yourself, behind the eyes. It's a very simple method. We make it difficult because of our attachments outside, because of our desires for things outside. We have got so used to it. Our desires and attachments with things outside in the physical universe have made it difficult for us to pull attention in. Otherwise, there is no difficulty. If you forget the world, and just want to find out what is inside, you'll find it's not as difficult as you might think. So this is a process, step number one, to discover who you are. Of course, we can have another step also, to go further inside, further within ourselves, further within the inner body. Method is still the same. The inner body is shaped like this body. Maybe sometimes looks a little bigger to some people. But the inner body also feels that you have a head, you have arms, and you have body. It's because the sense perceptions are located on the inner body approximately the same position there on this physical body. That is why it's a similar kind of body, but with no matter. There is a head in that body. You can now withdraw your attention within the head of the inner body, the astral body. Same method which you are going to use from here. What happens next? You can become unaware of sense perceptions. Takes practice. I can't say it's very easy to do it because it needs a lot of practice to meditate with the inner body. It's difficult even people say with their physical body but become a little more difficult. So if you are really keen to find out what is inside the inner body, What's really inside? What is really creating all this? What's the real creative power that creates all this experience outside? Then meditation with the inner body will take you exactly to that point. You will become unaware of the sense perceptions and become more aware of your own self. And then you will discover the power of thought. The mind that thinks is still intact. Neither physical matter is there, nor sense perceptions are there. But the total perception of the mind functions like all sense perceptions put together. The mind can have at once the perceptions that we have divided up 
today. There is a single perception that includes seeing, touching, tasting, smelling, hearing. They are all in the mind. And the mind is completely intact even after you withdraw your attention from the inner body, the sense perceptions. It's the greatest experience. Very few people have had it because they don't meditate with the inner self. They meditate with the outer self and they go only one step. But two steps are possible and then you will find the real cause of all experiences. That the mind is the creative power. And you'll also find that when we see a mind individuated, there is also a mind from which individuation of mind takes place. That is the next step by exploring your mental self, your mind self, which we sometimes call the causal self. Because all experiences in this world, in all created universes, is coming from there. So we call it the causal self. The causal self is the mind. There is no body as such, but this, the mind is also functioning like a body. Many people have thought that the mind and our life force is the same as coming from the mind. They call it the causal self. That the mind is creating all this and once we find our mind, we have found the truth. That is not true. There is a simple reason for that. The mind only functions in time and space. You cannot think without time and space. Mind cannot function without time and space. And your life force can exist even without time and space. Therefore, we distinguish between the mind and our true self, which we sometimes call the soul. The soul, the spirit of a human being is not the mind. The soul can function without time and space and mind needs time and space. You can go one step further, but not with your effort, not with your own mental thinking. All effort that we make is with the mind. Mind can be used to take you up to the point of causal stage. Beyond that, it cannot reveal to you what the self is. Nobody has ever got by trying too hard to find something to go beyond the mind. Therefore, lot of masters and mystics have come telling us that the mind is the creative power and mind-soul is the same. It is not. But there is something that can take you beyond even the mind to the soul. And that is something that is functioning beyond the mind. We discover in our daily life here that mind thinks and most of our life is spent in thinking and deciding things. Most of our life is spent in thought. But there is something else we experience sometimes. The most important experience which is not mental is the experience of love. When we have experience of love, it is spontaneous, sudden and no time is involved in getting the experience. There is time spent in thinking about it. There is time spent in ruminating over it. But the effect of love is instantaneous. So love is not a mental experience at all. Love is a spiritual experience. Love is experience of the soul. Similarly, sometimes we get certain knowledge which we call intuitive knowledge. Intuition gives us knowledge which is not taking time. It comes suddenly. And it can be very different from what the mind is thinking. That is also a spiritual experience. We sometimes look at beauty and it affects us in one instant. What is beautiful is affects us in one instant. That is also not a mental experience, spiritual experience. Therefore, we know right here that there are some spiritual experiences coming from the soul. The most important, of course, is love. Therefore, it is said that the real power beyond the mind is love. People sometimes call it God and they say God is love. Sometimes people call it totality of consciousness and it really resides in love. That love comes from the soul, love comes from totality. That is why 
those who have gone beyond the mind have been pulled by love beyond the mind so how can you be pulled by love we are pulled by love here there's something that pulls us when we feel love how can love pull us from beyond the mind who is going to pull us beyond the mind we see people here separated from us and they can pull us in physical terms we can see people in the astral plane they can pull us with love but since our mind cannot go beyond the causal plane who pulls us beyond that we have to know what is beyond that beyond that is our true self so true self can pull us but we don't know the true self we are not even going beyond the mind with our own thoughts that is why what happens is that when we are seeking something beyond our mind when we are seeking our true self another human being appears in our life and that human being is already operating from beyond the mind such a human being we call a perfect living master the definition of a perfect living master is very simple he is perfect because he is operating from beyond the mind all imperfections are created by the mind if his awareness is beyond the mind he is perfect there's no imperfection in the soul there's no imperfection in your true self no imperfection in the spirit which is beyond the mind therefore a human being who when he is walking talking amongst us and is at that level beyond the mind he is operating from that stage therefore we say he is operating from the stage of perfection a perfect living master why living because it's only a living human being like ourselves who can say no to us when our mind want to say yes otherwise if he is not living and we believe in a perfect living master who is not living we are really believing in our own mind because there is no way to check out if our mind is making up that or not people tell me they are having guidance from himalayan ascended masters they have never been to the himalayas i have worked in the himalayas i served in himalayas met all the masters there and they are working in their own way in their own little caves and none of them is in contact with anybody who say that we are being guided by ascended masters the ascended masters are nothing else their own mind making it up the mind can make anything therefore a living person who is operating from beyond the mind is not somebody that your mind can make up that is why we call him a living master and why do we say master because we can get share the information that he has the knowledge he has of beyond beyond the mind and apart from the knowledge his love can pull us beyond the mind perfect living masters come here do not teach anything sometimes we make them teach us because we love to be taught our mind loves to be taught with everything but they don't come here for teaching they come in response to the disciples who are looking for truth beyond the mind if you are not looking for a truth beyond the mind they need not come in your life it is said when a disciple is ready a master appears when a chela is ready a guru appears nowhere has it been said when a chela is ready he can find a guru nor has it said that when a disciple is ready he can find a master you cannot find a perfect living master because in order to be sharing love and and friendship with us he will be exactly like us sometimes more ordinary than us if there is something extraordinary about the person we could say he is a master but so many masters come and they say we are masters and they claim to be masters they claim that they have certain powers and they have certain powers also but a perfect living master does not come to prove that he is a master he is come to pull the marked disciples for whom he has come and take them back to the power of love that's it that's the only mandate given to a perfect living master 
to be a human being amongst other human beings who are disciples who are seeking the truth and he appears we can't find him but the master can find us how does the master find us because he is operating from a level beyond the mind where he knows us better than we know ourselves he knows our soul he knows our self he knows the longing of the soul to go back to its true home to go to the origin to go beyond the mind therefore a perfect living master appears in our life through coincidences circumstances we can't understand how this happens but when we are ready and looking for something beyond the mind when we are looking for true reality he appears when he pulls us with his love even the mind is left behind and we can discover our own soul the soul is pure consciousness soul is that which can be conscious of anything and that becomes reality and that becomes creation that's a great power and we have never known that we are souls really and even the mind has been created by the soul everything has been created by the soul therefore soul is the real creative power and the experiencer of what it creates simultaneously it creates and experiences simultaneously that is the nature of consciousness true consciousness totality of consciousness creates and experiences simultaneously no time gap is between the two people have been arguing for a long time is this world actually existing or are we making it up big question oh for a very long time people say is the tree there because you see it or you see it because it's there which is the truth does our consciousness make a tree and we see it or the tree has to be there then our consciousness can pick it up old debate going on for thousands of years and those who believe you have to have a tree before you can see it and they call materialist they believe in the reality of matter and those who say no our power of seeing can create a tree and they are called the idealists so this argument between the idealist and the materialist has been going on books have been written on it one group supporting that a physical world has to be created before you can experience it another group saying no you can experience it just by the experience being projected out and looking like it's reality outside but the answer need not be found by debate when you go within yourself you can find out that the idealists were right that you can create anything from within that the whole world has been created from consciousness from the soul but there is no proof greater than discovering the soul itself our own true self our own true self is that conscious unit called the soul lies beyond the mind beyond senses beyond physical matter and everything has been created from there now imagine what i am sharing with you is a possibility of discovering the entire reality within our own self not going anywhere outside everything is inside and when we are ready to go beyond the mind automatically a perfect living master will appear in our life what is our role then we say we want to find the truth we want to see god what is our role in that our role is to seek to seek to find seeking is a very big thing seeking is something inside us searching is different seeking is different when we search for something we are already taking it for granted that is there somewhere already created when we are seeking something we don't even know sometime what we are seeking but we are seeking the truth inside if you are a seeker of the truth a perfect living master will appear in your life when you are ready for it now what does the readiness mean readiness means that you have been sufficiently fed up with the world around you if not enjoy it suffer it and enjoy it one day you may be ready when you are ready a perfect living master will appear in your life by coincidence by chance by circumstances and 
There's no way to recognize a perfect giving master except that you suddenly feel that there's a pull coming, that you want to be with that being, that ordinary being. And you don't know where it's coming from. So that is why the perfect living master's appearance in our life leads to a lot of questions in our head, even doubts. A lot of doubts come because the human mind has been trained to doubt things. And from doubt, we are also fear. There comes fear. We are afraid. So that is why the mind becomes almost an obstacle in recognition of a perfect living master. The mind says, no, it can't be. And then something still pulls. I remember, you have a picture here of my master, perfect living master, Azur Maharaj Baba Savan Singh. He initiated me, accepted me. All I am sharing with you is because of his teachings and practice of his teachings. Nothing outside of it. This one man has given everything I am sharing with you. There was a professor who used to come to his meeting. He came one day and he said, Master, I don't believe anything you say. It's all made up stories. You people become saints and mystics and become gurus and start making big stories and tell people and people are fooled into believing your stories. I am an intellectual professor. I have mind to think and therefore I don't believe any of the stories. They are just made up. There's no proof, no evidence. The great master said, you have a right to believe what you like. My experience is a little different. We all have our own experience. My experience is different. You like to believe something you believe. You don't believe the stories are really, really true. You have a right to disagree with me. So the professor went away. Next week he was back and told the great master, Master, I want to come to tell you that please don't make a fool of people. These are not true stories. There is no evidence lying that there are inner things inside. Who has seen those inner things? You just tell people these inner things and people are fooled in accepting it. I am not fooled by this and I don't want you to do this. Great Master said, my experience is a little different from yours. And yours, you have a right to believe or disbelieve whatever you like. Next week and he was back again and said the same thing. Great Master said, you told me the same thing the last two weekends. And you come again to tell me the same thing. He said, Master, I don't know, but I feel like coming and seeing you again and again. I don't believe what you say, but I want to see you. Of course, later on, he became one of the best disciples and had great experiences. And he was a friend. I, I remember myself. Now, imagine it's a strange case where a person's mind is saying, don't believe. And the soul, which sometimes we call the heart, is saying, believe. There's a conflict between the mind, thinking mind, and the soul that is seeking. It's the seeking is the secret. That professor's soul was seeking the truth. But the mind was arguing, there's no proof. There's no physical proof outside. And the master was saying, there is no physical proof because we are trying to tell you the physical world does not contain what you're looking for. It is sometime inside you. Go inside and find out you're looking outside. People try to look in books, they look in meetings, they look in religion, they look everywhere outside. But they don't look inside. The mind can sometimes raise questions and we wait for all the questions to be answered. And sometimes it takes the whole life and then we die, then we're born again to ask questions again. There has to be a certain point when we should say, let's experiment and see what's inside. Great master sometime used to tell the story of a professor, another, it's just a story, intellectual professor. He went to a village and he did not know in the village there were wells without any parapet walls around them and they were at level with the ground. The professor was thinking of something else and fell into the well. Fortunately, the water was not very high in the well, so he didn't drown. But he said, oh, how did I fall? And he's moaning and groaning inside the well. A villager came 
and heard the voice and he said oh i'm sorry you fell into the well i'll go and bring a rope and we'll pull you out he said before you go and pull the rope first explain to me why i fell in the well and secondly you must tell me how can i believe that you'll bring a rope thirdly if you bring a rope how can i believe that you really pull me out maybe you throw the rope down and half way you drop me down how can i be sure how these things are going to happen he said don't you think if i take you out then we can discuss how you fell into the well he said no first answer all my questions he said that you stay in the well i'll go away he said we spiritual seekers spiritual people are sometimes saying first all questions have to be answered then more questions arise because there are too many conflicts in our understanding of what is true and what we are seeing outside there is a contradiction which we can't understand therefore we can keep on asking questions if we only ask questions and never try to say let me see what take one stride at least one step at least and see what is there of course it does not mean that you have to blindly follow anything in fact great master said there is no scope for blind faith on a true spiritual exercise and true spiritual experience it has to be a living faith the difference between blind faith and living faith as he described was that in blind faith somebody has made a statement and we believe it period living faith is we have an experience today and that experience leads to another experience tomorrow and the experience builds itself increasing our faith as like a living thing and then the faith grows and we get to know more and more so he said that the experience spiritual experience should be based on living faith that grows every day with your new experiences both inside and outside and not just because somebody said something we believe it unfortunately religions are based upon blind faith religions are based upon somebody's statement which we accept and that remains where it is so we do not see any growth unless we are seekers at the same time and seek within ourselves that leads to living faith so there is no scope for just blindly believing anything but sometimes we have to take one step to find if the second step exists or not somebody says there is a way you can go and see and we say we don't want to go we don't believe it but if you take one step you can see the next one so that is why the only requirement of leap of faith here is to close your eyes and see what is happening inside that's all meditation true meditation to go within your own self starts by looking at the, what is happening inside if you are not looking outside that's simple we look outside with our eyes close your eyes we hear from outside close your ears sit in a dark place and say what is happening inside can i imagine i am there yes you can can i imagine i am in the center of the head yes can i imagine i am walking around somewhere inside the head in imagination you can do that when you do that and put your attention on doing things everything inside your head you begin to see lights you begin to see things that are actually happening not physically some people dismiss this experience that i am talking of oh this is just imaginary you're talking of imaginary stuff i said yes i am talking of imaginary stuff but you will find that everything we are doing in this physical world has come from imagination all discoveries have been made by imagination all inventions have been made by imagination imagination was the secret of making it so when you say this is all imaginary inside if you become unaware of the physical body the imaginary becomes real and this becomes imaginary created by imagination see the transformation so it's not a bad experience just to start with imagination it looks imaginary only because we take this as the only reality if we give up the idea that this is the only reality 
then we will find that the imagination can be as real as more real than this reality so that is why don't dismiss imagination as being purely imaginary after all to imagine something you also need consciousness awareness everything is coming from consciousness the entire experience of this world is coming because we are conscious if we are unconscious we have no experience and when we are conscious we are also using imagination from the same consciousness it is only when we take this world as the only reality that becomes imaginary if you don't take this as the only reality and say i want to see other realities imagination will become real you will notice that in, when you withdraw your attention from the physical body and go within yourself imagination becomes the very creative power to create anything here what we are created is fixed we can't change it in imagination we can change it but when we tried imagination to create physical reality it became physical reality these things can only be discovered by being at that state for a while sometime we can have glimpses of that state they are not good enough to give you all the answers it does give an answer that there is something more than this physical reality but it does not give all the answers how the creative power of consciousness works in levels it works from the soul it works from the mind it works from astral self and imagination and then it works here by using all these things together when we are in a physical body it does not mean that we have left the soul somewhere the soul is making our experience of physical body real when we think sitting in the physical body does not mean mind has been left somewhere mind is being used here and when we use sense perceptions we are using the astral self right here we are using all these things right here so that is why these experiences you can get through real deep meditation deep in the sense of going further within yourself are all possible to discover the ultimate truth i have talked about the soul as the creative power soul is a unit of consciousness is there anything beyond the soul yes there is you haven't found the ultimate reality even after finding the soul which is permanent immortal has never di- never been born never dies that's a great thing to discover that we were never born never died you know real self in the soul but there's a reality even beyond that the ultimate truth the ultimate truth is that the soul is part of a total and the totality of consciousness is where the soul is being created sometimes they refer to a soul being a drop of of an ocean of consciousness it's a good experience that there is an ocean and the drop is a soul the ocean is totality when i was young the spiritual path was explained to me that you are a soul a drop from the ocean your reality is the ocean you've been separated for a long time for millions of years and you are longing to go back and merge in the ocean and the spiritual journey consists of working hard for the soul to travel back the drop to travel back and merge in the ocean i thought to myself that that's as a child i thought to myself if i am a drop drop of water of consciousness i am very happy i experience strange things in my drop of water light falls on me rainbows colors beautiful what they are telling me is take a long journey go back and merge in the ocean i will lose everything i have by merging in the ocean ocean will give nothing by one more drop coming in what kind of spiritual path is this is just a suicide by the drop it goes and merges in the ocean and i said i never follow this kind of a path this was my reaction but i was wrong and the way this truth was presented was itself incorrect the truth is 
that the drop of o- of drop never left the ocean the drop only contracted its awareness from the ocean to a drop and the spiritual path is not a journey anywhere it's merely an expansion of your awareness and awareness expands from a drop to the ocean the drop was always the ocean that's a discovery that makes sense that makes the spiritual path a great thing there's an opening of awareness to your own totality is not going anywhere or coming anywhere we never left the our true home we just left the experience of our home we left the awareness of our home and the spiritual path is regaining our awareness of our own reality of our own truth there is no journey involved we are already in our spiritual home we don't have to go anywhere we are operating from there all levels have been created right there it's only removing these covers upon ourselves and discovering we were always the ocean and the drops were merely created for an experience of the many in the one some people thinking with their mind have even asked the question if one was so happy and joyful what is the need for creating many if god is one and he is happy why should he create human beings why should he create anybody why should he create anything if totality of consciousness is the best state to be in and we are trying to be in that state then why have this state at all the answer is very strange but simple the answer is god is love totality of consciousness is love but not a lover and not a beloved the manyness has been created so love be- can become an experience of lover and beloved it is no many they can't be an experience of what the reality is love is reality to make it an experience you create the many and experience love and become a lover and a beloved all experiences were generated from the totality and that is why the manyness has been created within the one for experience of the one love is experience only when there are many and that is why the manyness has been created that's why we are so many here to experience love to experience beauty experience knowledge experience intuition experience the world experience all the worlds so that's the beauty of creation and the rays on the atre of the whole creation of everything from the single oneness single oneness the word one is in inappropriate because one means there could be two it's not even one i say total total is also in connect actually there is no language available to us to describe anything beyond the causal plane the mind can only understand what exists in time and space all languages of the world are designed to explain what the mind can understand and what is existing beyond time and space cannot be explained nor there is any language written supposing i were to say to you there is a beautiful large mansion our own mansion in which we are living but it is situated in zero time and zero space we can't understand it the moment we say large mansion you include space the mind cannot understand that a big mansion can also exist in zero space zero time the scientists uh, uh, physics people these were got uh, got very agitated when they first discovered a black hole they said the black hole is something that is eating up the whole universe eating up galaxies eating up even time it can eat up and yet it has no volume at all how could zero ness eat up everything and then create everything in a big bang but this is exactly what's happening inside us the world is being created from zero time zero space everything that has ever happened everything that will ever happen is all can be found in zero time zero space can you have language for that to describe it so that is why language is confined to what the ma- what the mind can understand therefore the only way to explain things beyond is tell stories and that is why 
Stories and parables have been made to explain everything. And there is no real language to be able to explain anything beyond the mind. But the fact that we can have an actual experience, every one of us has the potential, has the equipment to find the truth beyond the mind. Your role, seek. Seek with your soul, seek with your heart. Perfect living masters do not come to tend to our mind's desires. They do not come to work out our problems and solutions for problems here. They come to take the soul back to its true home, to its original state of consciousness. When we say merger, merger means you discover there is only one at the end. It is all total. There is no division. The divisions have been made to create experience. Starting at the most beautiful state of experience being shared within the one by souls. And then souls experiencing that through time and space created by the mind. We are all part of the same one. Having an experience of the many right here. In this world, we are experiencing differently than in our totality. The difference basically is, there is only one experience of one and here we have what is called dual experience. Experience of pairs of opposites. There is no opposite in our true state. Here we have opposites. Pain and pleasure, day and night, light and darkness. Everything here is being experienced in pairs of opposites. That's why this is called a world of duality. This is a dual world. And from dual world, we'll go to the world which is not dual. How will we experience the world that is not dual? If all the experience has to be generated by duality, we create this whole world of duality as a dual to the world of non-duality. So automatically by creating this world, that becomes, this becomes an opposite of that. That is how we experience our true home from here. Can we imagine that there are souls who have come here in the physical world like we have come? And there are souls that have not come. They are still in that state. And we through meditation, through love of a master and being pulled to our true home, go there. What will be our relationship with those souls that are already there, never left and never experienced duality? We will be dancing with joy. And we will be so happy to be back home to our true nature, to our true consciousness. And they will say, what are you dancing about? What is so great about it? We are all in the same place. We are all in perfect bliss and happiness. Why are you dancing? And we'll be able to tell them, you don't know what you're missing. Because they've never seen this. There is something very strange in consciousness that when you see the opposite, which is negative, painful, the pleasure is enhanced when you leave it. It is an appreciation that comes only by seeing the negative. If you have never seen the opposite, you cannot appreciate the positive. So, by having an experience of the negative, we are very lucky people, lucky souls. That we have had an experience which was not the positive experience. We experience pain, we experience suffering, we experience all kinds of negative things. And we go back into total positivity for all times. We appreciate that positivity more than those who never had a chance to see negativity. So, that is why there is a very big purpose in our being here in order to appreciate our own true nature, we've had this experience of being outside of true nature. So these are beautiful things that happen automatically. We come to know these things automatically when we go within. I'm very glad that you are here because you're seekers. You couldn't be here if you're not seekers. But you may know what you're seeking or you may not clearly know what you're seeking. So I have met so many people in personal interviews who say we have been seeking from childhood but never knew what we were seeking. 
and now we feel one day we have more clear idea what we are seeking the seeking of the soul is different from the searching of the mind mind searches for things believing they are all there we have to find where it is and soul is seeking its own true self but it cannot explain like that therefore the soul seeks love soul seeks beauty soul seeks bliss so soul seeks those things without being able to express itself fully because these things cannot be as adequately described as the search which the mind does which can be much better described so that is why seekers are seeking with the soul and searching in the mind so we search outside and we seek inside so it's the seeking that takes us to the truth our role is no more than seek if you seek you will find it's as simple as that if you seek inside you will find so all these things that i have shared with you are open to everybody no matter what religion you belong to no matter where you come from no matter what your age it is something that is covered by all religions to follow this method of discovering yourself you don't have to leave your religion don't have to change your nationality don't have to change your names you have to do nothing of the sort you stay exactly where you are and find inside yourself the inside will take away all these notions that we have to belong somewhere in order to find the truth not at all the truth is inside all of us and we can all just go within and find it i'm very happy that i can share these things with you because of my experiences my master great master ruru maharaj baba savan singh and everything that i am sharing is based upon experiences generated by his teachings is not book knowledge i haven't read too many books myself and sometimes i see people who have read too many books and they have too many questions because the books create more questions than answers the the same book can create different questions somebody asked me when you want to go within do you have to first put your attention on third eye center or can you just close your eyes and start repeating words mantras and all that i said if you don't sit inside first mantras won't work there are new knowledge for that person he thought mantra can be repeated any time and mantra the holy words we are repeating they could help but i said no they don't help unless you first feel you are behind the eyes then they work because mantra spoken with the tongue has no value mantra spoken with the mind has value so when we are not even sitting near the mind we repeat with the tongue secondly unless we have taken the first step of feeling we are there we will never leave the body the body is doing this the body is repeating mantra how will you find anything else it's very important first step they said we haven't read anything that you're saying like this it should be in the books i said well i don't know the books i have not read many this is very early on when i came to united states in the 60s this conversation took place and uh, i said great master taught this they said we have a book of great master and that doesn't say that i said which book is it they said it's called spiritual gems a letter is written by great master mostly to american and european disciples i said i have never read it if you give me a copy i like to read it so they produced a copy of the book called spiritual gems letters from great master to disciples and i read all of it all night and marked 16 places where he has clearly said that you have to be behind the eyes before you start meditation now people read books but they miss the part that is important there was another friend of mine when i was at harvard university he was working in boston and he came to me he said somebody gave me a very useless book on spirituality written by an american i said what was the name of the book 
Oh, it's called The Path of the Masters by one American old guy named Julian Johnson. I read the book. It's all, all Indian views just picked up by going to India and no truth in that. I was surprised that an American can be made a fool of like that. I said, what, where is the book? He said, I threw it away. I said, okay, I'm sorry, I haven't read the book. So, but after six months, he came back to me. Maybe it's longer than six months. He did come back and said, I have found the spiritual path. He said, where did you find it from? From the book. Which book? Path of the Masters by Julian Johnson. He really talks of sense. I said, that's the same book you told me you threw away. He said, I picked it up one day. <laughs> what he read on one day in the book was different what he read six months later. It is all what we read is what we are prepared for. What we understand, we never read the whole thing. We just pick up things which fit in with our thinking. If we don't believe something and is written there, we pass. So we are only reconfirming to ourselves what we believe and read a book. Second time we read it, it looks different. That is why sometimes we go and hear the same talks again and again. And we say it's the, it's the same talk. Why should we come again? But the same talk means something different the next time. One man I remember came to great master. He said, Master, I have been hearing your discourses. You keep on saying the same things every time. He said, have you started meditation? He said, not yet. He says, read, hear more talks. <laughs> same talks again. If there is no effect of it, you still have to hear the same thing over and over again. So that is why we have this very small section that absorbs things. And we absorb more and more when we are on a spiritual path. Look at the simple thing called a coincidence. A coincidence is something happening against the law of probability. It's not probable. We suddenly meet a friend. We suddenly open a page and read something. Suddenly a thought comes to us and we see the same thought written on a bo billboard on the street. These strange coincidences, they happen in our life all the time. But when we are in a spiritual path, we suddenly feel we are seeing more coincidences than before. It's not that they were not there, but we begin to notice more coincidences in our life. And that's just this indication that we are moving on the right track on our spiritual journey towards our own true home. So there are a lot of these things that come up, but nothing is equal to the actual experience of spiritual enlightenment within yourself. Go within and find out. I'll be very happy to see you again a little later. I'll have a break now and you can have some lunch and I'll come and see you about three o'clock and answer your questions. If you have any questions, they'll give you a piece of paper and pen to write and I'll uh, answer those questions in the afternoon when I come at three o'clock. Thank you very much for your patient listening.